The following program is appropriate for all ages and sensory friendly. Three, two, one. Studios of the Autism Channel in Palm Beach, this is the Autism Channel World News with Tracy Cooper. Welcome to a special edition of Autism Channel World News for Friday, December 27th, 2013. On last Friday's news, Roger Badish brought us a closer look at the growing issue of women and the autism spectrum. For our final Friday edition of 2013, instead of zooming in, we'd like to zoom out. A lot has happened this year, and since September, the Autism Channel has been here to bring it to you five days a week. As we get ready to turn over the calendar, we'd like to take a look back at what we felt were the year's 10 biggest stories in the world of autism. Our list kicks off in Brazil, home of 2014's World Cup Soccer Tournament. That's where one of the most popular athletes on the planet found himself associated with the spectrum this year. Retired soccer player Mario tweeted that he believes FC Barcelona star Lionel Messi likely has Asperger's syndrome. Romario cited similarities to Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein in our number 10 story of the year, adding that Asperger's would allow Messi to focus and concentrate better than others. Messi will compete in the World Cup this summer for his native Argentina. Another global celebrity made our list at number 9, this time coming forth herself with a diagnosis. Susan Boyle, breakout star of Britain's Got Talent, revealed that she was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Miss Boyle was previously misdiagnosed with brain damage from oxygen deprivation at birth, before a second opinion brought her to the spectrum. Susan's Boyle life story may be brought to the big screen in an upcoming motion picture. Our number eight story is a real knockout. Iron Mike Tyson made a visit to a school for children with autism. He not only delighted the students, but even kept his cool as one student spit in the one-time heavyweight champ's face. Dyson traveled to the Emirate of Dubai to visit the Dubai Autism Center, where he learned about autism and met a group of exceptional students who, in turn, had an exceptional experience that day. At number seven, the immunosuppressant rapamycin may be the key to improving speech and cognition in children with autism. This year, Boston Children's Hospital engaged in a clinical trial to explore the use of the drug on children with autism, with many of the participants' parents already reporting preliminary improvements in their children. Who rescued whom? That was the question in our number six story. Zena the Pipple was on death's door when the Hickey family of suburban Atlanta adopted her, not only nursing her back to health, but connecting her with their autistic son, Johnny. The time Johnny spent with Zena has made him more talkative and aware of his surroundings, while Zena is now a robust and healthy dog. For the difference she made in Johnny's life, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals named Zena their Dog of the Year. The world-famous Miss America beauty pageant saw its first contestant on the autism spectrum in 2013. Alexis Weinman, Miss Montana, not only competed in Atlantic City, but made the top 15. And with the most online votes in the field, she won the America's Choice Award. For bringing awareness to everything people on the spectrum can be, her achievement is our number five story of 2013. The Disney family of theme parks changed its policy for guests with disabilities this year, a story covered by our own Deborah Clark. In our number four story, the parks discontinued the policy of allowing guests with disabilities, such as autism, unlimited access to the front of the line. The change came on the heels of abuse, with reports of wealthy families hiring people with autism to serve as tour guides for the purposes of cutting in line. The new policy calls for guests with disabilities to pre-schedule their accommodated ride times. In our number three story of 2013, a tragedy in the state of Michigan shocked the autism community this September, when autism blogger Kelly Stapleton attempted to murder her 14-year-old daughter, Issy, after years of struggling to find adequate treatment for her autistic daughter. 
Kelly Stapleton had become familiar to many of us in the autism community, including our very own blog ladies, with her blog, The Status Quo. There, she chronicled many of the challenges she and her daughter met. Law enforcement discovered their smoke-filled van before it was too late, and Issy recovered in what her father called nothing short of a miracle. The news caused a schism in the community, with some stressing sympathy for the entire Stapleton family, while others unilaterally disavowed Kelly's actions. You may have heard the saying, just when I had all the answers, they changed the questions. That's how many people on the spectrum felt about our number two story of the year, when the American Psychiatric Association published the controversial fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM-5. With a role in mental health so large that it's often called the Bible of Psychiatry, any update to the text was sure to come with criticism and speculation. The most notable update was the consolidation of separate disorders, such as Asperger's and PDD-NOS, into one group entitled Autism Spectrum Disorder. The change made many in the autism community wary of losing their diagnoses and, in turn, services with the new criteria. Those with Asperger's who are proud to call themselves Aspies bristled at the loss of their distinct label. That leaves us with story number one, one in 50. That's the new rate of autism incidence in America's children. In March, the Center for Disease Control released the findings of their national survey of children's health, which found that one in every 50 children in America had an autism spectrum disorder, with boys four times as likely as girls to be diagnosed. This is an increase over the one in 88 rate that the CDC had published before this year. This new rate, higher than ever, will change the way America views and approaches the autism spectrum going forward. That's our 10 for 2013. What are your top 10 stories of 2013? We'd love to hear from you. Send your list to worldnews at theautismchannel.tv. Thanks for looking back on the year with us. We'll get back to looking forward on Monday as the Autism Channel World News resumes its traditional coverage of autism and news coverage next week. Thanks for watching. The Autism Channel needs your help. We're setting a goal of reaching as many of the one half billion people touched by autism on this planet. Please visit our website. Click to help us reach the world. <laughs>